Cricket Life Stories with me, Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Raj Chaudhary. Raj, how's it going? All good, mate. How are you? Yep, all good. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me down. So, Raj, you're going to give us a batting masterclass, some batting tips on the foundations of the art for all. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about your career. Playing the Ranji Trophy back home in India as an opening batsman. Yep. Talk us through it. Right, uh, born and brought up in Calcutta, India, and uh, the biggest factor in our lives in those days was one and only Sunil Ravaska. Our school teacher used to say India consists of three people um, Mrs. Gandhi, who was the Prime Minister, Sunil Ravaska, and Amitabh Bachchan, the Bollywood star. This is the background in which we grew up and growing up as a kid I was just obsessed with Gavaskar's batting. I don't think I would have played cricket if Sun Gavaskar didn't play cricket. And then as everyone grew up playing cricket in those days we started on the streets, moved on to playing school cricket, from there to club cricket second division, went to the premier division then played for the university, the zonal university, and then you went to play first class cricket and uh, zonal cricket later. So yeah, played seven seasons of it. And however, in those days, there was not much money in first class cricket in India like it is now. And uh, so all of us had to have a different source of income and we started looking at England to play come and play club cricket during the summer and that's how my journey started in England and uh, when cricket finished in India by that time I started coaching in England and what I did was I started doing six months in India six months in South Africa and did it for three years and uh, after that by that time my daughter was growing up and uh, her head teacher told us to settle down in one place because she had she was only four and by that time she had been to seven schools around the world so we had to settle down at one place and uh, luckily for me i got a job at a um, private school in the west country to coach cricket and from then moved on to Worth School in Sussex in 2004 and then set up First Class Cricket Academy in 2008 and in the meantime I did a lot of coaching for different clubs, counties and as of today I run cricket at this beautiful place and I run my own cricket academy called First Class Cricket Academy in Sussex we are based and we operate throughout the year. Yeah in terms of the professional game you've been involved in the setup with Western Province, Sussex Pathway as well? Yeah. Um, I came into the area in 2004 and the Western Province came when I was in Cape Town. I was coaching at a school called Sachs and there was a director of coaching at Western Province a guy who had played for Sussex before that and he was living there called Paul Philipson and he got me into coaching a bit um, with the Western Province under 19 boys especially on playing spin bowling and did a bit with them and then between 2005 and 2015 I was quite involved with Sussex I coached the age groups I coached academy I got involved with the professional side and EPP, I, I did everything and then I was the head coach of the North area for um, between 2005 and 15 and uh, then from 15 onwards I've just been at what school and my own cricket academy because um, to be honest there's not much time after that. Yeah, your academy is a fantastic system setup you have put all the links in the description below so whoever's watching this please do check it out Raj can't wait to get into this the batting masterclass for all let's go so Raj do you want to talk us through your main philosophies when it comes to batting uh, for me the main thing in batting is 
balance. Any cricket skill, literally. Your balance, the better your balance is, the better you will be able to execute your skills. And I'm massive on fundamentals of batting, where if you have strong fundamentals, you can play any format. Once you've reached your um, full growth and you've developed a bit of power, then you can play all formats. But if your fundamentals are weak, you're going to be pigeonholed into one format and that's likely to be the shortest format. Um, on top of that, uh, I like to keep things very, very simple because all the work has been done by the greats of the yesteryears and there's an enough evidence in what they have done just to pick points from them. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. So what I would say is the mum and dad of batting is two shots. Your front foot defense is your mum because 80% of the bowling is going to be in that zone. And then dad is back foot defense because everything else that will follow is an extension of those two shots. If you can play front foot defense well, you'll be able to punch well, you'll be able to run down and hit over the top, you'll be able to stand and hit over the top. At the same time, if you can play back foot well, cover line, then you'll be able to punch, you'll be able to cut, you'll be able to pull, and later stages you can get in there and ramp as well. So those two are the main base or foundation on which your batting is literally built. So what I can show you is some so small drills that we do with our players at first class so that they get into that habit. So how they keep their balance, how do they let the left side or the top side, if whichever handed they are, use the top side to do the work and I'll show you some simple drills the boys will do. Right, so you've got now Ben, who is a current county player, as well as Holly, who is a current county player. Now, what they're going to do is a very simple drill, no frills involved, with two benches lined up, and they're going to show you how they go through the front foot process and use the top hand to cock the wrist and pick the bat up at the same time. Next drill we're going to do is still on the bench, but what we're going to use is tennis balls and a mini bat. So I've cut a bat in half and I'm using a small bat as you can see Ben is holding on to. Now the reason for the mini bat is one of the biggest issues that young players have when playing forward is that they don't bend their front knee. Now if you don't bend the front knee your weight is not getting into the ball. Now with the mini bat if you don't bend the front knee you're going to miss the ball. So it's a very easy way of getting feedback whether you have actually bent your front knee or the weight into it or not. One other thing really important on the front foot is where your foot goes in relation to the ball. So imagine this is the ball and I have to play forward to that. Uh, you hear a lot of time coaches say foot to the pitch of the ball. Now if you take your foot to the pitch of the ball, there is no way you can access the ball because your foot is in the way and that's when you start playing around across the ball or across your front pad. So your foot literally needs to go next to the pitch of the ball for your hands to go through the ball and if you go next to the pitch of the ball your hands and head comes in line with the ball and that's what helps you to keep your balance that's one very important part about playing the front foot uh, another drill we do just for the balance part is we got a zwingo and i've got ben standing on the zwingo he's got a stump in his hand and he's got two stumps in front of him so literally he has to pick the bat up and hit through the st two stumps and once he's done it a few times we can move on and use a bat 
which makes life a bit more difficult for him. Again, everything is to get the, keep the hands close to us, have good balance, hit through the ball. So Ben has hit some. Now I'm just going to demo something. So I'm going to go on that swingo, no foot movement, and this is going to test my balance and how I hit the ball straight through the ball. And I have to keep my balance. That's the biggest thing I have to do here. Okay. So just trying to make sure my head is over the ball. I'm balanced and my bat is going up to hit through the ball. Very, very basic stuff, very effective, but at the same time, it's quite boring to do. This is not come in, hit, whack, fun, hee hee ha ha. This will take a lot of time to get into your system so that you can do it without thinking when you need to actually bat. Okay, now we are gonna, we've done the first part, the front foot part. Now we're gonna do the back foot part. So this is the dad part of batting. And the most important part here is, I bat on two, so leg in middle, so I bat here. The most important part is my back leg covers of stump. So if I have covered of stump, I know what to play, what to leave, and if the ball comes in here, I'm going to work the ball onto the leg side because in most cases, there are less fielders on the leg side than the offside. And it's a lot easier option to score runs on the leg side rather than the offside. Now, there are a couple of things here. Though we say it is back foot, it's very important that our weight doesn't go back. So when I'm playing back foot, it's really important that my weight is still in the ball and that will happen only if I go back on the front part of my foot or the balls of my foot rather than having big heel contact here. If I land on my heel, my weight has shifted and if now the ball gets a bit bigger on me, I'm in trouble. So it's really important that though it's back foot, my weight is in the ball. So if my weight is forward, I can adjust according to the height of the ball. I can defend, I can punch, I can move, I can duck, I can do anything. But if the heel plants, I'm really stuck. The other part is, a lot of people talk about the back foot being parallel to the popping crease, okay? Some people like it, some people don't like it. They play a bit more compromised and it doesn't go to point, it goes to a bit cover point. But one of the most important things is the function of that front foot toe. Because if I'm playing a ball on the offside, I need to make sure that my front foot toe is pointing offside. The moment the ball is on middle and leg or coming into my body, if now I have gone here, I'm a sitting duck to that line. So I have to make sure that my front toe opens for my hip to open to access the ball. That's really important on the back foot. Okay. So we're going to do a bit of feeding now for the back foot defense. I got three of my players here, Anish, Oli and Ben. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go a bit lower and I'm literally going to play on the height of the ball to make it a bit challenging for them. Once they do it with both hands, we'll move it to the next stage just to make it more challenging for them and they do it just with their top hand. Okay, a bit of variation to that drill now is they will pick the bat up with both hands but while coming down they'll use the top hand just to make sure they got strong top hand control on the ball. Okay, what we don't want is this side to come across the ball all the time. So you want to go with your front side punch, block, whatever you do. 
till you are playing a cross bat or horizontal bat shots when your bottom hand comes in actually or when you've got a bit of width. Okay, so mom was done before. We did a bit of practice on the dad shot. Now, what we're gonna see is that we can play a lot more attacking shots because our movement is in the right place. We are moving the right way. We are covering our off stump. We are getting room now to free our hands and play horizontal bat shots or straight bat shots according to where the ball is. So have a go at this. So when you have got that back foot movement nailed on, this happens more in the shorter format and especially against the spinners. So normally our back leg, if I'm batting here, my back leg to a short ball goes here. Okay, so I've gone here to play here or ball comes in, I'm going to play here. Now, in one day cricket, against spin at times we need to change the field or hit the ball into the gap for a single so if an off spinner is bowling then normally the field that is going to be set is a backward point deep cover extra cover mid off and there's going to be five on the leg side it could be a long on or a mid on mid wicket deep mid man by the umpire or deep square leg or a man at 45 so if I go here and the ball turns into me, the chances are I'm going to be playing to the mid-wicket guy. And if there is no 45 and this man is by the umpire, I might play straight to him. So in that case, I'm not going to get off strike. Now, on the off side, I've got an extra cover and a backward point or a short third man. So in that case, it makes a lot more sense not to go here, but to go back to back so that hit the ball into the spin, into the gap and get a single. So what that does is, it either makes the captain move one from here to here, or the bowler comes from here, changes his line to come in a bit straighter once he comes straighter i can access different areas and if i know that he's going to come straighter it becomes a lot safer to run down at him and hit him over the top or down to long on or just come back and keep punching it down to long on once mid on has gone back so this is just a little variation on the back foot it is not a compulsion right so first thing we need to learn how to do that that's the first part when i mastered that then comes the next stage, how to pick singles by getting the back leg into different positions against spinners, especially in the limited overs game. Okay, so we had a bit of practice with the mum of batting. Now we're gonna have a go at it both against pace and against slow bowling and see if from the mum stage, can they play attacking shots, punch, run down the track against the play, pace and uh, slow bowling. Great session with your, some of your students. Guys, do you want us to talk through the influence Raj has had on your young cricketing careers so far? So, um, I first came across Raj in the year 2016. Um, I came to FCCA to, to, get, to get better as a cricketer. 
Um, Raj had tested me out early on and see where I was in my game and at, in that, at that point I wasn't quite where I should be. So from the year 2016 to now 2021 I've improved quite a lot which has made me now play Premier League cricket for East Quincy Cricket Club. Yeah, I came to the Raj when I was about 11 and uh, I was in a bit of a state in my cricket career but since then he's been a mentor, he's solidly built up my technique again, helped me with the highs and lows that I've had and uh, now I can confidently say that I'm a solid player and I'm confident in my abilities. Um, a combination of both what Ollie and uh, Ben's had to say that um, I've been with Raj since I was eight. I haven't really had a choice but he's taught me everything I know about the game, how to play, mental aspect and um, I wouldn't be playing the cricket I'd play if it wasn't for him. Raj, some closing words? Keep it simple. Watch the ball, keep it simple, work on your fundamentals and after that, trust your instincts.